Okay, in this video, we will begin uh, our review of the real nine. <clears throat> Sorry, the real number line. So everything we work with in mathematics, uh, especially here in calculus, are related to numbers. And basically, uh, real numbers are order, right? We have one. Uh, why is my pen not working? About to get the right color. All right, sorry about that. Right, we have one, one being less than two, less than three, less than say 3.5, and so on and so forth. So we can order all of our numbers on a number line. Imagine if you will, you've got zero in the center, above that is one, and then all the numbers in between one, right? You've got one half, one fourth, um, above one you've got two, you've got three, and so on and so forth. Below zero you have negative one, negative two, negative three, and as far as that goes. So the numbers, uh, the real numbers at least, uh, uh, we, can, we can order, um, and we think of zero more often than not as being kind of the center of the universe, though in both directions it goes out forever. It never ends. There's never a largest number. Um, now one of the first things uh, as a mathematician whoops, uh, that we'll want to do um, is to collect numbers. Um, so an easy way to collect numbers is just put them into a set. Um, so I could say you know a small set uh, may have a few things in it. Maybe one, the number pi, uh, square root of 2, 7, uh, negative 2. Just a collection of things. I've got five things in it, and it's a collection of numbers. This may be a solution to uh, an equation, a polynomial. This may be the roots of a polynomial. Um, it could be um, a solution to some other set. Um, then we've got special sets of numbers. So, um, And I want to introduce this notation now. This double scripted N stands for the natural numbers. And these will be the numbers that starting at 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. So these are our counting numbers. So natural numbers or counting numbers are often what these are referred to. Um, then we've got um, uh, another symbol I'll use, the Q with the double stroke. This is the set of rational numbers. So all of our fractions are in here. Uh, one half rational numbers. So fractions, one half, three fourths. Um, and we could write it this way. This is the set of all things A over B, um, such that, uh, um, a and B are not, whoops, are integers. And uh, we can't divide by zero. So if I wanted to write the set of rational numbers uh, in set notation, right, it's everything that just looks like a fraction. A over B, where A and B are integers, and b is not zero, because we can't divide by zero. Of course, uh, I introduced the rationals notation before. It would have been nice if I had the symbol for integers. Um, so we use uh, the z, double stroke z, to be the set of integers. So this is going to be our natural numbers plus the negative natural numbers and zero. Uh, so set of integers, I'm sure you're familiar with the set of integers. Um, and finally, the, the, the largest set uh, that we'll work with in this class uh, will be denoted by R, and is a set of real numbers. Um, so once we have these notations, so we'll use these symbols in class again, so uh, make sure these are in your notes. Um, Double script N for natural numbers or counting numbers. Uh, double script Z for the set of integers. Double script Q uh, for all rational numbers. 
and then finally the set of all real numbers. Um, now oftentimes we'll have a collection of numbers and we'll want to know um, all the numbers in between two bounds. So we could look at um, maybe this set, I'll call it the set of all numbers x, uh, such that, I don't know, negative 2 is less than x, but less than, say, 5. Now, this is a perfectly good set. These are all the numbers, so you can, you know, 0 is in here, 1 is in here, uh, negative 1 is in here, negative 1 half is in here, uh, pi is in here, square root of 2 is in here. Um, so this set is a, um, you know, well-described set, um, but this is uh, not the typical way we would write this. Uh, so let me kind of show you what this would look like on the number line. So we've got our number line here. Here's 0, um, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, so 6 in there. Um, so I want to know all the numbers that satisfy that belong in this set. So I know that they've got to be bigger than negative 2 and less than negative 3. So let me grab a color. Um, so if I just were to highlight what we have, it's going to be everything from here up to, say, 5. So all of these numbers in here are in this set. Now, I don't include negative 2 because I don't have any quality. So I would go all the way up to 2, but not include it. And the same with 5. I can go up to 5, but not include it. So um, that is an interval. It's what we call an interval. And it's the interval numbers between negative 2 and 5. So a nicer way to write this would be this is equal to the interval from negative 2 to 5. So let's look at another example. Um, let's say uh, I want to look at all the numbers, I don't know, uh, positive numbers between 1 and 10. So again, using my set notation, I would say x such that 1, and let's let it be equal to, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 10. And how would we write this? Uh, now we're going to include 1 and include 10. So we include the endpoints, and so we use hard brackets, 1 up to 10. Again, if I were to draw the number line, here is, say, 0, 1, 4, I don't know, 6, 10. Then I'm going to include 10, include 1, and then take everything, uh, say, in between. So all of these numbers are in my set. So if I want to graphically look at the number, uh, this set, it's all the numbers including 1 all the way up to 10, um, but this is going to be the interval notation that we use. And notice again, if I include the endpoints, I use a hard bracket. If I'm going to exclude the endpoints, I use uh, a, a soft bracket like I did in this example here. Uh, so the textbook has a, uh, a number of other examples. Again, this should be review. Um, and um, best of luck with your studies.